Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and in this video, we're going to talk about dead bees in winter and what that means for you and your bees in your bee yard. Now, this colony right here has quite a few dead bees, and there's even more below the landing board. Look at all this bee poop up here, by the way. It got about 50 degrees today, but it has really cooled down again. It's very moist. We've just had crazy amounts of rain. That's what we get in winter. But why are there so many dead bees? And there are um, several reasons for that. Also, we have to consider that bees are dying constantly throughout the year. Bees don't live very long. We're talking anywhere between, I think, a poor bee who's going to only live you know, five weeks, and you know they can go a couple weeks longer than that, but it really depends on the nutrition coming in, and also if they have viruses or bacteria in there, or if the nutrition is really bad, or more often than not, there's a combination of both. Now, those bees down there, more than likely just got old. Now, how are bees able to go through winter with the bees getting old? And that's because we have different, really, types of bees as far as um, what physical condition they're in. You have nurse bees, you have older forager bees, and you have different stages within that. And you also have the winter bee. The winter bee has stored all kinds of nutrition in their gut. They haven't gone and, and flown and forage for long periods of time and so they haven't worn their bodies out and so they can live for a long time you know in places like you know the northern parts of the United States and Canada and Sweden and all those places they have to stay in a cluster for a very long period of time and it is very amazing that they can do what they do however there are bees still dying every day and if you didn't know during peak season when the queen's laying you know a thousand fifteen hundred eggs a day good queen will probably lay around 1500 maybe a little bit more then you're losing at some point 1500 bees a day and that's why you have to really watch it because colonies are very dynamic they go forward really quick when healthy but when they start going downhill within 10 to 20 days that colony population can really tank so there's a difference in the winter bees but check out this colony let me give it a little smoke i might need to put my veil on all right so we've gone on and put some pollen patties on and there's a little bit of sugar brick now 99.9 percent .9 of our colonies don't have the sugar bricks on because they don't need it but we use this colony for a, a video and some of our colonies do end up a little light but let's get in here and see what's going on and we'll explain why i believe there's so many dead bees down there keep in mind there's always a few bees in the hive that are having issues with something maybe it's there's a little bit of tracheal mite in that bee that doesn't mean it's in all of the bees sometimes it's just in a handful of the bees and of course they're the ones that end up at the bottom board if you didn't know the queen mates with multiple drones and some of those drones have better genetics than others some of them might not be very resistant to tracheal mites for all we know see how that sugar brick is nice and hard like that the bees have been pitting all that up so that is exactly what we need because if it starts crumbling and falling towards the bottom board, they'll just kick it out at that point. All right, let's get this pollen patty out of the way, and we'll show you what these bees are doing. Whew, you've been working on this thing, haven't you? Look at that. See that nice texture right there, nice and soft? That's exactly what they need. And they were just all down in there eating that away. Sorry, girls, I'll give it back, I promise. Maple should be blooming any day now. Definitely early this year, but that happens every handful of years. Now, some people are going to tell you never to go for the middle frame, but if you can scoot a couple of these over, you can do that. All right. You have to be very careful pulling it up and make sure you don't have really fat combs either. You don't want to crush that queen. I don't recommend you do it, but I'm going to do it to mine. Ooh, lots of heat. Look at all those bees. And I can see them all the way on the front, the next box below. Now, there's the queen right there. That's why you have to be careful. Green dotted queen from last year. This one is from our Italian line. Yep, she's looking down for a place to lay. All right, do you see all that bee coverage? Look at that bee right there. That's a fuzzy new bee. That one hatched out today. So what that's telling me is since our bees are brooding, oh, speaking of hatching out today, look at that one right there. Happy birthday. 
So what that tells me is that we are raising a lot of brood in this colony. And when that happens, those winter bees, some of them stop becoming winter bees. They start turning into nurse bees, which means they have to start feeding the larvae. And they do that by creating worker jelly. And they create that from pulling from the reserves in their body, the fat body organ. And when they do that, they switch over. Um, physically, now they're a nurse bee. And that means their life span or their biological clock starts ticking and they start living a shorter life. I got one up my sleeve. And so that's why we're seeing dead bees. Those are just bees that are getting old and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So, but you would think looking at that entrance, you wouldn't have bees like that. I'm going to go and check one more of these over. Now, I'm sure someone's going to whine about me setting the queen out, but goodness gracious, it's my hive, folks. All right, let's dive down here and look. See what we got. Oh yeah, I'm seeing more fuzzy bees. Yeah, fuzzy bees there. So all this is hatching out right here and that's making the hive grow a little bit, but it also means we're losing bees and that's just part of beekeeping. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is. There are beekeepers and some on YouTube that overwinter their bees in winter sheds up in Manitoba, and that, that would be Ian Stepler, and I'm sure others do it as well. And when that happens, they have to scoop up dead bees. Even though they have them in a, a controlled environment, they still lose bees through the winter. So that's just part of beekeeping. Look at those bees down there on the next box. There's just bees doing great in this hive. So this colony is doing just a little bit of growing, but they're also doing a little bit of dying, and that's just part of beekeeping. So just understand that a good healthy colony is always going to have dead bees throughout the winter, but sometimes it'll be seem like more than other days because if it's really stinking cold, they won't be able to do quite as much of getting rid of the dead bodies in winter. And keep in mind, if bees are really weak and you're in a mild area, you might not see that so much because as the bees get weak or if they have a virus or something that's plaguing them, um, honeybees are kind of programmed to fly outside the hive and throw themselves out because they're trying to get rid of either the disease or the pest or whatever it is away from the colony. It's um, a very noble thing that they do to, to help keep themselves from, keep the colony from coming down with something if possible. So we're going to slip this queen and her bees down in here. Now some of you are probably wondering about the brood, it being in the 40s, but Ah, there's plenty of bees over the top of it, and for that little bit of a time span, they'll be all right. So we're going to put all this back together, put that patty back on. We just threw that on a little while ago. I say a little while ago, sometime last week. And, um, you know, they're just going to grow a little bit. We're in January right now. So if they just brood a little bit up, a good solid frame of bees will translate into about two and a half, three frames of coverage, depending on how full the frame is. And you know, January... February, March, and then we start producing honey in late April. So we have a lot more time between now and then for these bees to keep growing and get a lot bigger than this to produce some honey. We're going to show you all that stuff and more. If you haven't, subscribe to our channel and we're going to show you basically everything that we do as much as we can. So thanks for watching our videos.